How you doing? This is Reverend Eric Miller. Uh, it's good to see you guys again. It's good to be behind the pulpit again. It's good to uh, to have so many people praying for me and strengthening the ministry that's been given. Um, so I just want to say a, a, a warm Christian thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters, for holding me up and and and, and putting my putting me at the throne and and helping me get healed up because it's been a long road. And I tell you, uh, what brought this on today this message and uh because so many times so many times you see it you probably see it across your social media you know pretty much once a day maybe you know you see it on the midnight if you're sitting there you know at night and you ain't you can't sleep and you're up all night and you know you turn on the tv and you got the thing coming on with that guy with the big smile saying you can earn a living and 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 just have a startup with just a few measly dollars and you can get everything together that you want you know, just as get rich, uh, quick scheme overnight, and let, 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 that's just not how it works. That's just not how it works. But you know what it is? It's not. It's a successful snare of a devil. It is one of his good tricks. But I'm not even gonna give it that much. It's not even that clever. But you know what it does trigger? It triggers that thing in us that we wanna. We want the riches, and we want. We think money equates peace, and we think that you know, if I ain't gotta worry about my bills getting paid, I can now have more peace in my life that I can pursue God and pursue the interest that I'm looking for. And it's just not even close to the truth. Peace comes from Jesus. He said it himself. Peace comes from Jesus. You know, he says that in John 14, peace I leave with you is not the peace of the world, but the peace and the joy that, that is within me. I mean, Christ left us his joy and peace inside of us. So how do we not experience it? But let's talk about it today. We're going to talk about callings in God. Now, again, you know, I'm real horrible, horrible at naming a sermon because it just, it, 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 it comes out and it's birthed the way the Holy Spirit wants it to. So the best, you know, message I can, not message, the best title I can give this is which calling, which calling are you from? Your caller ID, what is it going to read? Is it going to read a follow of the Lord Jesus Christ or follow of your own dreams and your imaginations that you think is going to be what God wants you to do? And honestly, that is a, a war that every Christian probably fights for the beginning of his salvation and where well alone into his into into his road until he starts to understand this is I'm driving a, a, a life that I don't even know that have the instruction manual to. I mean, don't we, I don't want to get too far off topic, but do you understand what happened when you are saved? When you become a Christian? It'd be like if you woke up one morning and you have a brand new Lamborghini sitting in front of your yard and the keys are sitting next to your, your, your nightstand and it says, drive me. It's you know, free of charge. It's yours. And the, those, those first few seconds, you get so excited. You're all happy about it. You're like, oh, Lord, I got a new car. It's, ooh, I ain't got to pay no payments. Oh, man. You know, I, then... And you get behind it, turn it on. Ooh, it's beautiful. Hope you can drive stick shift. This is you. This is great. Until you start thinking about something, that reality kind of hits in. Insurance. Upkeep and maintenance. I work at this job that I only make X amount of dollars. Where did the car come from? Was there any strings attached to it? You know, things like that. Well, you you got to start looking at it. Well, guess what? I'm, a, I'm trying to show you and paint a picture that, you know what, instead of just looking at the car and getting behind and driving off and then getting to a car and can't pay for it, do you not think that when we get a new Christian life that we need Jesus Christ to direct us? We need God to show us what it is in this life that we now have on how to act and how to pursue the things that we now are on the road to do. No one thinks about that. You know, here we are being saved. The word tells us we're a new creation. We're a new man. Put on the new man of God. But we never even start thinking, wait a minute. Well, God, how do I function now as a Christian? How do I function now as a child of God? How do I operate as a child of God? Well, we're going to discuss some of that today. And I'm going to try to piece this all together because there's a lot of meat in this Bible. You, you can't go through the Bible. You, you know, I know there's a lot of devotions out there. Read the Bible in a year. But... You know, that's kind of like trying to sit inside of a buffet and eat every single steak they give in front of you thinking it's going to go down. No, you got to take your time. You got to eat and, and you got to piece this thing out as God gives sees fit and sees, give, sees to give it to you. Okay, but let's let's go ahead and talk about it. So the calling of your life, these get rich quick schemes, we go address these things and what we're going to address it in the manner that says, look, which calling do you want to follow? The one that God has purposed in you or the one that you want to purpose into yourself? Well, first of all, let's get to the scripture. And let's get down to some brass meat. That didn't really make a lot of sense, but you know, let's get to some brass tacks. We're going to go to 2 Timothy, you know, a really good book. 
I love the book of Timothy. Of course, I'm going to say that about all 66 books because they're all good. They're all delicious. They all help to nourish the soul. They all educate. They all help us out. I mean, they ain't no, there's not one book in this, in this Bible that ain't good and profitable to us. Not one of them. If you find one that's in this Bible that's not profitable to you, you probably need to be saved. You probably need to start questioning God, what's going on in my life, God, if I can't find any one of these books profitable. If I can't find every single one of them relevant to my life, you, you might want to start over. But anyway, let's go to 1 Timothy. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 9. Now, there's a lot of meat in between. There's a lot of meat before I get to verse 9. Okay? So we're just trying to take a snippet of it. We're just going to take a snippet. And we're going to work with it. I'm going to try. So let's go, uh, let's go to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1. Verse 9. We're going to have to start verse at verse at verse 8. Let's start at verse 8. Be not you therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner. This is Paul talking to Timothy. But be you a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, I just want to read that to kind of get an understanding. This is Paul writing to Timothy, and, and he's basically encouraging him to, to reside in the calling that is in him. And don't be ashamed, because when you reside in your calling, the gospel, the, the, the affliction that comes with the gospel is unimaginable. And with all these word, faith, preaching, and all this fake, false doctrine, they are softening this message to think that preaching this word of God is not going to come with no adversities. Well, let me tell you, let's bust that lie right now. It's going to come with every single adversity you could ever think of because preaching the truth hurts. And I don't know a soul on this planet besides Christians, and even we still complain about the truth. So let's get into it. Let's, let's, let's break down and let's get all involved in it. So, verse 9 now. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began now again that's a lot of meat I, I can't go all into all of it because it, it, there's so much of it but i'm just trying to give you a snapshot of what it is to stay inside the calling of god or abide in the calling of god and have the courage to stay in the calling of god so here's how I, let me, let's let's break the scenario so i get online on facebook and see something crazy come across my my feeds you know i get tagged in some wild stuff about how to you know, get rich quick. You know, I see something but these dollar bills all over the place and the guy sitting there t selling it like it is the greatest thing since sliced bread and butter. He's telling me, you can make so much money. I can, you know, my family is prospering. I mean, I'm making money hand over fist and all I had to do was this and X and X. And, and I tell you, it burns me up. You want to know our country? I can get I can get real country because I tell you, it burns my fish grease. I mean, it is hot. It is ooh, it burns me up. Why? Because it's given this false sense that you don't have to put no hard work in to earn the things that God has for you. But see, that's the key right there. They don't want to put no work in. They want the quick, fast, easy way to get to what you want. You want to get them bills paid quick so you don't want to work hard at your job every day earning $7.25, $8.95, $10.15, $10 10-hour days, 16-hour days. No, you want to find a way to work three hours and make $3 million. That's what you want. The, we want that easy road. But that is not how it functions. That's not how we work. One of the problems that we have, and it's our major problem as Christians, is we're not patient enough and we don't have enough discernment to realize when we're called into what God has asked us to do, we don't follow into that calling. We want to make up our own calling. We think Madison's, and some of his word faith preaching, a lot of it's just ignorance on our part. Now that we're saved and we now have a direct line to the master so we can talk to him direct, we can now get involved and, and bring his presence down to us and start asking for things, right? Start running that ATM card that I like to say to God. And we start saying, okay, God, now that I'm now that I'm a Christian, I'm saved in Jesus, I repented of my sins, now I can always become that entrepreneurial spirit and, and start my 401k company that preserves this and I want to start a, a, a daycare business over here I can now finally be the businessman that I wanted to be it before I got saved and never did we even think that when we got saved God had a purpose for us already but see in our mindset we think that what we have purposed in us we think well now since I'm saved I can now go do this thing whatever this job whatever this career that you think you want to go into you think that is the pinnacle of what God wanted you to do, and that's why he saved you, so you can go accomplish that role, so you can accomplish that dream. That's so far from the truth. So far from the truth. Why? Because whatever you can imagine about your life, 
God has already figured out what is worse go works best for you. But what's even better than that, this is where it should feel good to you. What's best go help others in your life and on your road and your purpose. But if you're starting to think that the purpose that you, now that you're saved, and the idea in your mind is the one that God wants to elevate, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to tell you this without trying to hurt your feelings. It ain't so. It just ain't so. Just because you want to be a CEO of a multi-million dollar company and you've been dreaming this since you was poor and didn't have shoes, just because you got saved does not mean that dream is coming to pass. There's a purpose that God has for you, and unless you want to rest in, in that purpose, which that true peace that we want, that, we, that peace that Christ is talking about, walking in your purpose and in your calling gives you that peace. My God is the truth. Walking in God's purpose gives you peace. I don't care how bad the world is blowing up. I don't care if you, if you see the tidal waves bigger than the Empire State Building coming. It won't even move you because you know you just stand in your calling, stand in your faith, let them waves hit you, and you know that you, if you let the water go above your head, but you, you can still breathe, you can still see God, you can still see Jesus, and you just stand there and you just endure that wave, and that wave that I'm talking about is when people trying to tell you things, you can do this with your life now, you know, Eric, because you're a Christian now, so now you can decide your own life, you can do, you can decide your own destiny, you got to stand there in that storm and in that water and just, and tune it all out and say, Jesus, I'm standing in your purpose. I'm standing in what you asked me to do. I'm standing in the will of God right now. I am not moving. I don't care how big this wave is moving. And you know how often that happens every day? Daily. Daily this happens all the time. Can you imagine that your calling is just as, a, as under attack as your faith is? Why? Because if you do your calling and God has purpose for you, you go do some good for the kingdom. And that is under attack. So how do we attack it? Let's attack the doctrine. Let's attack what God has purposed inside you and laid inside you by saying, you know, I'm putting my laws in your heart. Let's start attacking and at, at the center of where your faith is. The every wind of doctrine that you hear talks about in Ephesians. Let's not just, let me just not hint around it. Let's read it. Because you know what happens with a lot of people's callings? They get washed away by that huge empire state building like, like tidal wave. Because they get caught up in the idea of wanting to do their calling versus the calling of God. That's why that, that Paul warns us about this. Now let's go to Ephesians. And let's go to verse 14. There it is. There we're, I'm sorry, that which, this is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, that we were hereafter be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up in him to him in all things which is the head even Christ. Now see what he's talking about? Any wind of doctrine that'll get you detoured from the purpose that God has laid out to you. That's what he's talking about right now. That's what he's talking about right here. Let's all have the same faith. Let's not get washed away in all this new doctrine, this new word faith movement. You know, God has called you to be a tax collector. But you know, since you're a Christian now, you can change your destiny. They're going to talk about that all day long, right? Ain't that one of the favorite things they can do? Now you can decide what you want to do with your life. You don't even know how you wrecked your life to go to hell in the first place. You just barely realized what repentance was and what it is to be a sinner. Now they got you trying to get go back out there and create new sins and new problems. And they ain't even trying to teach you how to function in the purpose and in the calling of God. Because you ain't spent no time with them to listen about your calling of God. Because there's nobody there to tell you, hey, you need to start to just hunker down. You got saved. Let's figure out now what God has purpose for you. Now it's time to sit down and wait and, 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 and wait on the Lord to come deliver his message to you but no you don't want to have no time for that time's money right and you wait you feel like oh man i gotta now that i'm saved i got this new suit on this new armor i, I gotta start running around and doing my thing no you gotta calm down brother sister you gotta sit down and be patient you gotta be patient 27 years did, did it take me from i finally start to accept my call to preach 27 years and even now after two years of accepting that call don't think i've not been anxious don't think that i've not been trying to god i can do this let me do no I can't. I can't move anything at my will. I can't move anything at my will. I can only act on what God says. Okay, Eric, now it's time for you to act, son. Not before. Not any, I, I don't have that power. It is his purpose and his calling, which means he has say so with, with my, this, his throat, what's in me that comes out this mess, this is all his. I don't have no say so in that. that ain't, that's not mine. I don't get to sit up there and create, you know, sermons that I want to preach to make a point in front of a political meeting. 
This is his vessel. He gets to do what he wishes with it. And he's going to wish to do the purpose. And guess what? If I'm in agreement with God, I'm going to be happy with what he's doing, having me do in my life. So I'm not going to be carried away with no crazy, wild stuff. So you're going to say, well, Pastor Eric, you know, I got some good. I, I think I know what God is calling on my life. Here, that's the second problem we have. We think we people being called to preach, being called to do these things, God ain't called anything like that. Ain't picked up any phone to call you and tell you if this is what he wanted you to do. But see, we have this idea that we know what's on God's mind. We think we know God's ideas. We think he, since I'm called, you know, as a Christian and now I know I'm saved, I know God wants me to do this because I just know how God is thinking. I know the purpose that he has in my life. Well, hold on now. Let's talk about that. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Verse 8, let's talk about it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You can't imagine what God has planned for your life. So when he purposes something for your life, you still can't grasp the idea of how you go get there. Because it wasn't for you to do, but it's for you to carry out. You didn't decide on what your purpose is. It was purposed in you. And guess why it was purposed in you? Guess why? Make anybody got any ideas? I'll wait. I'm waiting. Anybody got some ideas? Can you answer them? It's a very simple one. Any ideas? Let's go to Romans 8.28. That'll answer that question. Romans 8.28. If you don't like Romans, I don't know what's going on. Romans has got to be a real, real big punch in the eyeball to let you know what's going on. But look at verse 28 in, in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to what? According to what? His purpose. Not your purpose. His purpose. God's purpose. So we're called to do by his purpose of what he wants to what he wants us to do in our life. Are we comfortable in that though? Or do we want to rebel and do the things that we want to do? We want to just do the things that we feel like doing. We want to, God, I don't want that calling. I want this calling. I see preachers and I want to be a preacher. God, I don't want to be a, a, a deacon. I, I want to be, I don't want to be a teacher, Lord. I want to be, I want to be the guy at the head. God, I don't want to be a burger flipper. I want to be able to, to own the Burger King that I'm working at. You know, when God calls you to do something, hey, you know, Eric, I need you to, I'm going to call you to be an administrator. But, it, it, but the administration that you'll be doing is at the current job that you have, and this is how you're going to be ministering to those that come above you. Can you imagine me sitting there thinking, God, I'm going to do this? No, that ain't cool. I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. What are you talking about? I'm a preacher. I, sh I deserve to be over here. I should have a big, huge church with, with more people coming out of it than coming out of a Best Buy or a mall. I mean, I, what do you mean just be just that? I'm a, I'm a Christian now. I got to have big dreams. Don't Joel Osteen talk about that all the time? Think big. Dream big. First of all, your dreams are nightmares compared to your life. The things that you dreamed up in your life and your imaginations in your life are so crooked and so broken. That's what got us going to hell in the first place. And God's tried to warn us that man's thoughts are so messed up from birth. So you can't sit up there and decide what's good for your life. You don't even know what's good for you. The only thing you knew was how to wreck the car that God gave you in the first place. We broke the vessel. Don't you understand that? You, you Just because. I ain't trying to bust your bubble. Let, let, let me tell you. I love you. I ain't trying to hurt you. But I'm trying to tell you. You got to reside in the calling and, and, and have take take solace in the calling and purpose that God has for you. It may look little to you, but man, the impact is far greater than you could ever imagine because it is God who's directing the steps. Why can't we have peace in that? Why can't we have peace in what God has purpose for us? Why do we have to fight against that? Why do we have to fight against this, this idea that God don't know what he wants to do with my life? I know what I want to do with my life. Why do we have to go against God? Why can't we go with God? They always say, be in agreement with God. Well, that, This is what we're talking about. Be in agreement with your purpose. Be in agreement with your purpose. Quit trying to figure it out. Do you know how many people I see make mistakes on a daily basis? And I made them same mistakes. And I got tired of it. I'm tired of falling down on my face, busting my face open because I think I can walk in the calling that I want to dictate for myself. You can't create no destiny for yourself. You can't create no new path for yourself. You can't create no new walk for yourself. The walk has already been made, and it is the walk of following Jesus. We're supposed to forsake our lives and walk down the road with Jesus so we have a new purpose and a newfound understanding in our life. So that way we're not walking around aimless and rudderless and just falling all over place and going this way and that way and being tossed around. Why? By every wind of doctrine. That's why you, you can't stay foundation in the faith that you got. 
got because you're so interested in trying to do your will that you ain't letting God's will get done. Let him do the purpose that he had for you. Quit trying to do it yourself. Have some faith and some patience inside what he's, what he's put inside you. That's a huge thing. God, I am now saved. Show me how to understand the purpose and calling of my life. Don't you can't imagine a calling better than God has for you. You can't come up with nothing better than God has for you. God's got gifts that you can't even can't even imagine. If you ask for a car, God already has a house over here. You whatever you think you know best about what's good for you, your caretaker higher than heaven already knows what's best for you. But are you gonna trust him? Are you gonna have faith in your God? To live in your purpose. To follow in your purpose. Quit trying to make your own road. Your sledgehammer ain't even that strong. I can't break the rocks that's been happening in front of you. Don't you realize the sin that, that, that has confounded your life so deeply? It's so ingrained in your flesh. And it's still trying to mess with your mind to think that you can create your own destiny. And these new word faith preachers are not Christians. They're satanic messengers. And you and don't try to listen to their messages. Because it's gonna sound it's gonna sound inviting. Who, who, who don't like apple pie? Who don't like sugar? Let's just break it down. I know some people don't like apple pie. So, you know, just assume that who don't like something that's sweet and tastes good? Of course we do. Everybody's going to like it. Kids know what Skittles are before they even know who their mother's name is. Kids know about McDonald's before they even know what, for how, how many fingers they have on one hand. It's, it's easy to go after the stuff that feels good and tastes good. And that is exactly what sin is. So when you think about that, I want to have all these riches. I want to have all these ideas, all these sweet things. And God is saying, Eric, I didn't call you for that. When you got on your knees and you begged me for forgiveness, you repented of your sins. You recognized that you are a sinner. That, 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 this is the conversation that I, that I remember having with God. Now I recognize that I am a sinner, Lord, and I, can't, they, I could not manufacture anything. Let me tell you something. Two years ago, I was in Colorado making great money. I don't know, doing my thing, you know, out every week eating and hanging out with great friends and family that I made in Colorado. God bless all my family in Colorado. I love y'all. I miss y'all dearly. But let me tell you, I was unhappy. Even with all the money that I had, I was unhappy. I wasn't, I wasn't at peace with myself. So much so that I created debt to create a problem in my life. Can you imagine that? I wasn't comfortable having just money and being debt free. I went and made debt so I could struggle with something. So I could feel like there was something, I know Lord, that I could fight against. Never realizing that that emptiness was because I'm a sinner. And I could not manufacture my own happiness. Happiness is like water bleeding through your hand. No matter how much you try to cup it, it's going to bleed through. You can't make yourself happy. You can't. The pursuit of happiness, guess what? You're going to be running until your legs fall apart. You're going to run until you get arthritis, but you're not going to get any closer to it. It's like trying to grab onto something with Vaseline on your hands. It's just not going to, you can't grab your own personal designed happiness. But you can grab the joy and grasp at the joy that Christ has laid upon you after you've repented of your sins and allowed yourself to become a child of God. Allowed God to love on you. And then after that, allow God to grow the gifts that he has for you. Allow God to grow those, those fruits of the spirit. Allow him to grow that in you. All your job is to do is to abide and act when it's time for you to act. Wait and be patient in your calling. And when he tells you to move, you move. That's proactivity in a spiritual level. This is Pastor Eric Miller. I want to thank you for all your love, all your concern, all your emails, all your support. Thank you for your donations. They've gotten, I mean, I, I can't even tell you what it's like to see this ministry grow at a grassroots level. And, and me being, being content with the fact of how it's growing and how it's helping folks. I had so many grand, here, I'm a victim of it, right? I'm, I'm talking about it. Look, here's my confession. I had an idea of my own idea about what I wanted this ministry to do. Had the church foundation, had the church built, had had the model created, had a business plan, and God revealed to me, Eric, that's not right. That's not, that's not of me. And I had to walk away from it. That's not of God. There wasn't going to be any blessings on that except what? Man worked efforts. And man worked efforts ain't no good. I'm telling you, man works efforts ain't got nothing. There ain't nothing to man worked efforts besides failure. If you ain't trusting in God, no matter what, no matter what scheme or an idea you come up with to try to earn your way out of a situation that you're in, it is going to utterly fail because only God can pull you out of a hole. I just preached about that uh, another episode ago about when when Joseph was in that hole and his brothers put him in there. The only person that get, get got Joseph out that hole was God. Only person that can get you out of your situation is God. There is nobody else. Jesus is the only one sticking his hand out to get you out of a situation. You cannot 
give salvation to yourself. You can't give salvation to your life. You can't pull yourself out of your problems. You can't pull yourself out of your circumstances. You don't have the strength to pull yourself out of your circumstances. You don't have the willpower to pull yourself through your circumstances. You're broken. You're hurt. We're beat down. You can, you have, we have enemies that we haven't even understand who they are yet. We, they ain't even revealed themselves that are against you. You can't pull yourself out of that hole. Only God can get you out. And unless you start trusting in him and in the purpose and calling in your life, you're going to be going after every wind of get rich money quick scheme, every new religion that, that comes around the corner, every new word for a preacher, every new T.D. Jakes book that says, finally birthing your purpose, finally birthing your purpose. Man, come on. Come on, bro. Really? A book about birth? Now you're ready to birth your, the God's promise. What, what are you talking about, brother Jakes? Come on now. That purpose will birth when God sees it ready to birth. He's the one that can decide when it's when we can come out that oven. He's the great potter, right? He's the one that's remolded us from a broken shell that we was. So he knows when when he when we're inside that kiln in that oven, and he's looking at us, and he's you know weighing us down and taking a look and seeing, okay, look, you know, let me roll Eric this way. Now we're in pain inside the oven, but he's in there refining it. He knows when it's time for us to come out, not us. Not us. Come on, bro. It's time for you to birth your purpose. You can't birth your purpose. Only God can allow that purpose to go forward. But you first got to get an agreement with him. You got to get an agreement with God. You got an agreement with this word of God. You got to start believing what it says so that way you're not questioning and battling against the word of God. Now let's pray together today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you that you help strengthen us in our purpose. Strengthen us in our in, in, in your will, Lord, and help us understand when we want to try to do our will that that we just we just want to take a step back and do what you ask us to do. Lord, it is not easy for us to try to walk walk in your shoes, Lord. It's not easy to follow after Jesus because Jesus is so hard to follow after you, Lord. Not because we don't love you, but it's so we're so used to walking in our own shoes, Lord, that we just need your strength and your compassion to 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 nurse us along as we go through this process, Lord. Help us gain faith and strength and assurity in the call and the purpose. Lord. Make your the purpose that you have for us, Lord, make it more evident in our lives as we become closer and closer to you. As we repent and, and repent of our sins and repent of our broken thoughts and repent of these old lifestyles that we want to possess, Lord. I'm asking all these things, Lord, just strengthen us. Give us the courage to go forward, Lord. Give us the courage to be able to, 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 to go inside our, the purpose that you have for us so that way we can do the will of God that you have for us. Now, let me want to read this and close this out. I don't want to talk too long, but let's go back to 1 Timothy. and I, want, I mean, 2 Timothy. And I just want to read that. I told you there's a lot of meat in it, so I know, you, you know, I try to stay away and not get too far because that can go into another sermon, and I try not to make these YouTube videos too long. So let's just take a look, and it says... In verse 7, this is 2 Timothy, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Now, I want, to, I want you to just, 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 brothers and sisters, close your eyes and I want you to think about this. God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the spirit of not fear, but of power. And that power that he's talking about, the power and of love and of sound mind, of a disciplined mind, that means God has given you a spirit that you can l reside in. When you start to get you know, agitated or you start to worry about your bills and finances and, and, and your marriage and you start worrying about your job and, you know, you just pull back and go within yourself and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the comforter. I mean, my God, I just comfort me today.